Hola, mis amigos. That's hello, my friends, in Spanish. I took Spanish in high school. I don't know if you could tell. Uh, but I, I'm not good at it now. And also, probably from the last video, you can tell my French isn't good either. I just started that. I guess I'm a jack of all trades, a master of none, or good at none also. But anyways, welcome back. And in this video, we are going to create the rest of this historical um, table, if you will, in a dynamic fashion. The first thing that we're going to do here is in this D, in this uh, column D, I'm just going to call this participation, and, and, and we're going to treat this different. And I probably spelled it wrong, but we're going to treat this different than the other stuff. This is going to be static. Everything else is going to be dynamic. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to come up here. Um, should I do it this way? And you can copy any of the drop downs that you have. It doesn't matter. It could be this one, that one, any ones up here. It, it doesn't matter. I'm going to copy one of them and paste it next to participation. And then I'm going to unmerge the cells. And then after that, I'm going to copy this metric and just paste it over and over again until we get to the end. How many car? We go all the way to M. And then I might make this column a little bit bigger and select it all. And uh, let's go to format and, and let's wrap it, wrap it up. And I might make the font smaller and center align, vertical align, just so I can kind of see what's going on for now. And actually, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to merge the season phase column and merge these. Copy. I'm just going to paste the formatting down um, a bunch of rows, like more more data points than I would than I would ever have. So we'll paste the format only, so that everything is merged for these two, and then we'll start kind of here doing stuff. We only really have to write two formulas for this, and one of them covers 90% of it. That one formula is one that we've done already, and it is it is one that we've done a ton in the past, and that is average ifs. You're probably seeing a theme here. There are a couple of different formulas that I use over and over and over again. If you get good at these few formulas, you'll be able to do almost anything that you need to do. So for average ifs, we're going to do what we've already done again. So we'll go equals average ifs, open parenthesis. What do we want? What do we want to get the average of? You guessed it. Whatever this metric is here that we pick. So how do we do that? We use index. So we'll go index, open parenthesis, call our named range, which is testing data comma we don't care about the row because we're going to determine that with the rest of our average ifs criteria so we do another comma what column now the column we are going to match open parenthesis whatever this metric is right here comma to our testing headers which is another named range that we created comma zero close off the parentheses so now we know we want to get the average of whatever metric this is in our database, which is body weight. So we want to get the average body weight, comma, when what is true. Well, in this case, we want the average body weight when the athlete is equal to the athlete that we pick up here. And when the date is equal to this date right here. And if you have multiple events on a date or a different, uh, nah, never mind, don't worry about that. So we want it for this date. Now we can go to our testing data and for criteria range one, we can say athlete name, comma, and we'll just say one for now, which will end up being the athlete that we pick, comma, and criteria range two will be date, comma, one. And that date will be the date in the row of this formula. And we'll close the parentheses and click enter. And now let's just make a few changes. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to lock in this 5, 9, but not the E, because we want to copy and paste this formula across to different metrics. And But when we paste it down, we don't want this reference to this metric to change. Then we're going to lock in testing data A to A, lock in testing data B to B, 
and we're going to change the one after A to A to the athlete's name that we pick, which is right here, and we can lock that in with dollar signs. And for the date, we're going to change that one to be this date right here, and we'll lock in the A, not the 60, because as we paste this down, we want it to look at that date and that date, each date successively. And we can click Enter. And now we have the person's body weight for that date. And the last thing that we might want to do here is do if error. So if error, open parenthesis. If there's an error with anything going on in this big old formula, what do we want it to do? Comma. We want it to be quote, quote, which is blank. Close the parenthesis, click enter. You might want to say something else like no data. Um, anything is really fine. You can copy this formula, and I'm not going to go to the bottom of my sheet because I might want something. But no, I mean I'll just go to the bottom for now. Bottom of the sheet, and I'm actually going to remove a bunch of rows in this sheet. Probably just don't need that many. So let's go. I'm just going to remove it up to up to a hundred. We have a hundred rows right now. That's fine. So that's great. Now we have body weights for every one of these uh, dates. And now, because we set up our formula like this, we can copy this and honestly just paste it throughout the entire sheet. And now we have body weights for all these dates because all these are body weights. But if we change this to whatever metrics we want, right? This might be CMJ, CMJ average. And this might be, uh, what are we thinking here? 10 meter sprint. This might be. 20 or maybe maybe actually this is broad jump might as well just keep it in, in order broad jump this is going to be 10 meter sprint this will be 20 meter sprint this will be body fat this will be i don't know vo2 max what am i missing here this will be trap bar deadlift relative strength this will be bench relative strength and this can be as many metrics as you want. Hopefully you have this set and you don't need to switch things around. I'm making it dynamic uh, to accommodate for the potential, uh, your, to accommodate for your metrics, essentially. For whatever you have, you should be able to integrate them here. And once you determine that, you might want to set the decimal places. Like, so if this is CMJ average, I might just want this to be one, one decimal. Sprints are fine. Let's maybe I want all of the sprint stuff to be two decimals. I'm setting this up relatively quickly. Body fat, that's fine. I don't don't really care about that. Oh, all this stuff, way too many. I'll just have it be maybe two decimals again. And now let's move on to participation status. And actually, I'm going to change this. This is too. There's too much green I feel like uh, I'm just gonna make these gray and I'll make all this stuff I shall keep that black 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 and I'll make these gold because I know that I can pick them oops and I'll remove borders for now uh, I'll figure out how to color code this later and participation we can't do averages with participation status because participation status is not a number. So you have two options. The first is that you create a calculated field in this testing data, which pretty much says if full, then one, if limited, then two, if out, then three. In essence, you turn the participation status into a number. The other thing that you can do is you can just use index and match to get the participation status for this date for the person that we select. And now that I think about it, I don't think that we've done this yet. I do have videos on my YouTube channel that go over how to use index match with multiple criteria if you need a refresher or if you need more explanation. But we're going to use index match with multiple criteria here. And this is going to be a little bit different than what we've done previously because we know that we want participation status. We are not looking for a metric that we don't know what it is yet that we're picking. We know what we want, so we can go equals index. Oops, oops, equals index. 
open parenthesis, our reference, we can go to our testing data tab and just pick participation. That's what we're going to want to go in that cell ultimately. Comma, and now we need to match the row. We don't have to match the column because there's only one of them. So by default, it'll just be the first column, which is what this is. And we'll go match, open parenthesis, one, comma, open parenthesis, name, because we want the name of the athlete that we pick to be equal to, I'm going to say one for now, close the parenthesis, asterisk, and I'll explain this in a bit. Um, this is kind of my strategy now is just to get it done and then we'll explain it. Open the parenthesis and the date equal to one and close that parenthesis, comma, zero, and close that whole thing off. Close it off and click enter. Okay, what's going on here? And now you can see the whole formula. We want to get the participation status for when the athlete's name equals, and we'll change our one to the athlete that we pick, and when the date equals one, but not one, sorry, when the date equals this date, not one. And now let's lock some stuff in, and I'll explain what's going on here in a second. So let's lock that in, keep that one. You will need to keep this first one in the match formula, and we'll lock in the A to A, and the A3, and the B to B, and we'll lock in the A, but not the 60, because we want the participation status to, um, we want the participation status associated with each one of these dates. And we'll click enter, and we'll go if error. If there's an error with anything going on in here, what do we want to do? We can go comma, quote, quote, or blank, close the parenthesis, click enter, and then we can copy this and this formula will paste it to the bottom of our sheet. And this person was full. I want to see if I can find someone that wasn't. Uh, Trey, Trey Sung. Okay. So now Trey Sung is our guy here. Change it to him. Now we see, all right, we got some limiteds in there. Now let's talk about this formula for a second, and then we'll go and move on to another video. So we want, so what we're saying is we want to get the participation status for our index reference. And for the row of the index or of the participation status that we're going to get, we are trying to match two things. We are trying to match the athlete's name to the athlete that we pick and the date to the date that is in this row. Now, the reason why we do one as our search key for a match is because we want to match the number one to both of these things, which are logical operations. Essentially, we are checking to see when each of these things are true and we are multiplying them together. If, some, if one of these things is not true, then it is zero. If it is true, it is equal to one. So let's go, I wanna see if I can keep this formula open. Oh, man. Okay. Um, so what we're saying is we're looking for participation status and we need the number one to be equal to whatever this is. And what this is, is it's checking for when the athlete is equal to the athlete that we pick. So once we find the athlete that we pick, this part equals one. And we're multiplying that by this part. So once this is true, this will equal one. So we are looking for the scenario when this equals one and this equals one because this, or when this is true, or equal to one multiplied by this or when this is true or this is equal to one the number is one so we're matching the number one to when both of these are one because when they're multiply when you multiply one by one it equals one in the case that either of these are zero or they are not true then that number is zero because even if the athlete is equal to the athlete that we pick if the date isn't equal to the date in question then this will be equal to zero, and one times zero is zero, which does not match the number one. So essentially we're scanning every row and being like, okay, 
does the athlete is the athlete's name equal to the name that we pick and also is the date equal to this date and when both of those things are true they are both equal to one and that is a match with this number one which is our search key and that's how it works <laughs> so I don't know if that was helpful or just made things way more confusing than they need to be but in any case that's the end of this video and if you need a better description for what this is um, again I have an, uh, an index match with multiple conditions video in my Google Sheets essentials for coaches and sports scientists and you can watch that now a little bit about me I'll tell you something that I can't deal with from a technology advancement perspective I need to read books on paper I like to highlight I like to underline I like to write notes and all this ebook stuff and all this uh, whatever Kindle even just reading research papers online or whatever it might be I can't handle it I need things on paper so that's kind of my fallback from from technology that I just can't can't get used to and if there's something that, that you can't get used to um, from a technological advancement standpoint leave it in the comments let me know I always appreciate that stuff and I hope you enjoyed the video if you did like it please make sure to actually give it a thumbs up like it on the on the YouTube and if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you've been enjoying this content so far please make sure um, that you subscribe just so YouTube knows that it is helpful for for somebody out there and I appreciate you watching thank you and I look forward to dominating the next uh, couple videos with you and knocking this out great work so far